In this video, I will be showing you how to set up Access and Employer on the Go for three employee level products employee self service, online timekeeping, and My Employer on the Go. Depending on the level of access granted by your payroll company, you may or may not have access to all the features discussed in this video. Uh, employee self service, the first option, allows users to log into a secure website and view current and past pay stubs as well as W 2 information. Uh, they may also update some employee information, such as address and emergency contacts, depending on settings. Online timekeeping allows users to log into a secure website and clock in or out for work. Uh, the employee could record break, lunch times, or log in to a specific division, location, department, or job if needed. My Employer on the Go was designed to work hand-in-hand -hand with Employer on the Go, and allows employees to do everything that they can do in both the employee self-service and the online timekeeping products. So if an employee has My Employer on the Go, they don't need the other two. Um, in addition, My Employer on the Go users can utilize the system to ask for time off, record time cards, and potentially be able to fix their own time punches. All right, so in the system, in Employer on the Go, on the main dashboard page, You'll begin by selecting Employees, Product Access. All right, this will take you to a screen where you'll see all active employees listed for the company. I have the employee ID, their first and last name, um, username or status of their setup, email address if they have one on the contact tab. They'll, um, it'll show here what time zone they're in, and then there's three um, sets of two columns, status and next action for employee self-service, status and next action for online timekeeping, and status and next action for my employer on the go. So today I'll just um, speak as if I'm just setting up employee self-service. There are two methods for setting up users automated and manual. The automated does require the employee to have an address on their contact tab. So we could do the automated method for these four, this last person we would have to do manual. So if I go, I'm gonna go ahead and click on edit so you can see how this changes. To set up users, Let's take a look at the second one to the bottom. Um, so the status would be inactive, currently showing for the user. You would come here and change it to active for all the employees that you want to set up for the product. When you change the status to active, notice that right next door, the next action goes to send registration. So I'm gonna do that for all 50 employees or however many I'm setting up. I update all the employees, then I click on save. I've already done this, so I'm gonna go ahead and cancel. But once I've changed all the employees that I wanna activate to active, I click on save and I wait for it to finish saving. While the system is saving, it's sending two emails to every employee that I marked active, one with the registration password and one with a link to the registration website. The employee will click on the link, enter the password on the next screen, and then they can enter uh, their own username and password to use going forward. Once they do set up their username, you'll see that the username populates here. Until they set up their username, the status would be registration pending and the same under username. And these will all update after the person answers um, those two emails and sets up their own username and password. There are a couple other fields here, this next action field if the employee says you know they have not gotten the email within 45 days, you can come here 
and select Resend Registration. Um, the status field next door is also used to deactivate an employee. So if the employee is no longer using the product, you can just change it back to inactive. If you inactivate the employee themselves, they automatically, um, the user account automatically deactivates. So that's the manual, or that's the automated method. If you had to set up a manual person, let's take a look at William, and then click on this employee access setup. And this is where we would have to set up a username and password, pick the product that I'm giving them access to. In this case, I was just saying employee self-service. Um, if you happen to be activating online timekeeping, you could also put an IP address here to restrict the user to only being able to log in from specific IP addresses. So they potentially you know, could not clock in from home. If you use the manual method, you have to provide the employee with the username and password. They would have no way of knowing it because you're setting it up for them. Um, and if you happen to be setting up a user for employee self-service and online timekeeping, they're only going to get one registration email. And they use the same username and password for both products. And if they want to, um, once they log into the products, they can change their username and passwords there. <laughs> 